to switch it to where the athletes are wearing shoes. Ah, young grasshopper. You want to see Cobra Kai behind the scenes secrets, do you? Well, you've come to the right place. Wax on, wax off, wax on, wax off. Oh, sorry. Is this thing on? I was waxing my car. You're probably here because, like a huge portion of the internet, you are a Zabka-sized fan of the smash hit Netflix, formerly YouTube series, Cobra Kai. The show has been an absolute revelation on the streaming network and is one of their most popular shows. Not only are fans of the original Karate Kid movie drawn to it, but it's also found a new, younger fan base, and with season 4 on the way, the buzz isn't going to quiet down anytime soon. But as you wait for the upcoming season, we thought we'd give you young grasshoppers a reward for your patience with some behind the scenes secrets from the show. From crazy workout regimens, Easter eggs to the original movie, and that famous fight scene, get ready to enter the dojo of Cobra Kai, and by the end, you'll be catching a fly with chopsticks. Well, obviously not, we don't have that power but just go with it. Am I right? Yes, Sensei! Wrong! Cobra Kai may be a huge hit, and Johnny Lawrence, or as Barney Stinson would say, the real Karate Kid, actor Billy Zabka may love being on the show, but he was initially reluctant to reprise the role of Johnny. This may be in part down to the fact that he was often typecast after the release of Karate Kid in 1984, with Zabka performing in a string of similar movies. Zabka is now happy he made the decision to return and said that he's thrilled to perform with his old co-star Ralph Macchio, who he shares a special bond with. Macchio is also happy to be back in the dojo, but also commended the writing staff as well as the young actors who make up the show. Both were also quick to share the sentiment that they are happy to bring the Karate Kid world to a new, younger audience. One thing that made the transition for Zabka easier to return to the character was the fact that he had kept up with his martial arts training since the days of Karate Kid. Despite not being the spirited young man he once was, Zabka did continue to spar and train on and off, and even got to the level of a second degree green belt. Machio, however, had not been keeping up with his training since Karate Kid, and while he still was an ambassador to the art, he was a little bit rusty when returning to the role of Daniel and had to catch up quickly. But you can see a notable difference between the sharpness of the two foes in the first season. But with Machio now back in the swing of things, a face off between the two becomes an even tastier prospect. But as I mentioned before, Zabka isn't quite the young man he used to be, and unfortunately found that out the hard way, as he got into a little accident on set. During an interview, Zabka stated that during the first fight scene, he ended up pulling his hamstring. But that's not all. He also said that he managed to break his toe when he ended up jamming it, and said that it went right back into his foot. Yeah, ouch, that has gotta hurt. Despite being in intense pain and having to hobble over to the side, Zabka continued shooting the scene and kept going on like a trooper, which I think is kind of in keeping with the character, to be honest. But of course, Cobra Kai is not just about Daniel and Johnny, with a great young cast at its center. The show consists of some truly awesome fight scenes, like really awesome, and while stunt actors are used for the riskier moves, the actors were also very involved in the fight sequences. Like the characters they played, they were all relative newcomers to martial arts, and therefore were like a blank canvas. But stunt coordinator Hiro Koda, who is also the stunt coordinator on another Netflix show Stranger Things, ran into one problem, but it's not the one you might expect. Despite their amateur status and the actors learning martial arts as they went along, they picked it up very quickly. Too quickly, in fact. Koda said that the actors were getting too good, and were performing at a higher level than their characters, so actually, it had to be toned down. Which I mean is a nice problem to have. This might be down to some of the crazy and intense workout schedules the actors engage in. Sholo Medawenya, who plays Miguel on the show, said that he has a 2-4 to four hour training regimen consisting of professional stunts, martial arts, boxing, strength, and yoga to keep him in shape, and said that it's the hardest thing that he has to do. Yeah, no kidding dude. Alternatively, my routine of tacos, video games, sleeping, watching TV, and yelling at inanimate objects when I lose video games also keeps me in shape, but that shape is slightly more circular. But it's not just a lot of time and effort that got into mine and Sholo's workout routines, but also the costume design. For Hawk actor Jacob Bertrand, he spends 25 to 45 minutes in the makeup chair for them to ply his trademark back tattoo, with the time dependent on how much he moves around in a scene. But that is almost nothing compared to the amount of time that goes into his mohawk, which takes one whole hour to do. An hour! To be fair, that is one awesome mohawk. That is an hour well spent. 
One of the things that makes Cobra Kai successful is the fact that it manages to be its own thing, but at the same time, pay loving homage to the Karate Kid series that influenced it. That's because it was created by Cobra Kai superfans John Hurwitz, Josh Held, and Hayden Schlossberg, who expertly put a number of Easter eggs from the original film throughout the series. One of which comes in the very first episode, which includes the fight scene between Daniel and Johnny from the 84 film, as well as showing never-before-seen footage from the movie. Some of the perks of being in a hit TV show or movie is that you get to keep some of the goodies and props. And that was the case for Samantha actor Mary Mauser, who got to keep the outfit that she wore on her date with Miguel. That's because Mauser was very sick during the cast photo shoot, so the costume designer actually let her keep the outfit. Hey, Screen Rant, what's the deal here? Where's my free outfit, hmm? I could do with some new clothes. I have been wearing the same outfit for weeks like a cartoon character. Uh, quarantine, am I right? Like Felina and Ozymandias in Breaking Bad, and long-term parking and members only in Sopranos, a great level of detail and hidden meaning goes into the episode titles of Cobra Kai, such as the title of the first episode of Season 1, Ace Degenerate, which is a reference to a line of dialogue from the original movie. No thanks, pal. Johnny, who you kidding? You're silly, Ace Degenerate. Cobra Kai and Karate Kid certainly have an established a diehard fan base, especially if you grew up with the original movie back in the 80s. That is certainly the case for Will Smith, who grew up as a fan of the original movie and loves it so much that he's actually a producer for Cobra Kai. Of course, one of the best things about Cobra Kai is the epic fight scenes which make up the show, but they can cause a lot of pressure and anxiety for the actors performing in them, especially for Peyton List who plays Tori, who didn't have much time to prepare for her fight scene, which caused her to be nervous during filming. Alternatively, the toughest fight for actor Mary Mauser was the epic fight scene at the end of season two, something which we will excitedly go into further detail later on. Back to the Easter eggs now, in the second episode of Season 1, Miguel asks Johnny if there's a particular way he wants him to wash the windows, to which Johnny replies, I don't give a shirt, except he doesn't say shirt. This is an obvious reference to a certain line from the original movie, we referenced it earlier, but also showcases the different teaching styles between Johnny and Mr. Miyagi. While Cobra Kai may be set in Los Angeles and does shoot some of their scenes there, like a majority of Marvel films, the show is actually based in Atlanta, Georgia, with the Cobra Kai dojo actually being located in Atlanta. Apparently, the cast quickly warmed to the city, with Mauser saying that she fell in love with a burger place called Fred's, where she ate at nearly every day. Who knew that burgers were good for martial arts training? What are in those burgers? See, my training schedule doesn't look so dumb now, does it, huh? Either way, if I'm ever in Atlanta, I am going to Fred's. But despite the hot filming locations, that does not mean that it doesn't get cold from time to time. During the filming of Season 2, Episode 7, which is located in the woods, filming apparently took place on a very cold day, with the actors being freezing cold and struggling to deal with the slippery and muddy conditions. It's hard to imagine anyone else's Tori now, but apparently Peyton List didn't think that she would get the part. The actor, who at the time was better known for her work on the Disney Channel, said that she got the audition super last minute, and she didn't imagine in her wildest dreams that she would get it, but was super excited when she did indeed land the role. Good for her. I'm still waiting to hear if I got the role of the child on The Mandalorian. I think I might have missed out. As promised, now we move on to the epic fight scene that took place at the end of Season 2, which is awesome enough to have a video on its own. The fight scene, which took place in a school, was filmed on a tight schedule, with them only having four days to get it right. Like the hallway fight scene from Daredevil, they wanted it to have a one-shot take, meaning that there are no cuts in the camera or in the acting. The time constraint also meant that the actors only had two days to plan the choreography of their moves. In terms of blocking, actors would have to quickly go off-camera, and hide behind the extras while their stunt doubles replaced them in the scene. And deagle-eyed viewers can quickly see this happening during the take. During one part in the scene, Mauser also ended up with a bad injury after misplacing her hand and took a bad blow which left her in the ER. Mauser returned the next day to finish the shoot, but if you look carefully, you can see where her hand is taped due to the injury. 
three, but that is almost nothing compared to Tanner's stunt double, Kane, who apparently has two fake front teeth, which were knocked out in one moment when he hit his head on the floor. Later on, we see Sholo kicking a railing, but he maybe kicked it a little too hard with him actually breaking it. I wonder if they put him in detention for that. But the most shocking scene was seeing Miguel falling from the railing. I guess that's karma for breaking it. This required two balance beams to support him and a wire around his waist so that the actor didn't actually plummet to the ground. He was then dropped at a third of the speed that he would have actually been dropped before being replaced by the stunt double who took the blow like an absolute champ. What did you make of these secrets? Are you a fan of the show? Which team are you on? Let us know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe to Screen Rant. See ya!